In this tutorial, I'm going to be talking about anonymous types in C Sharp. If you haven't watched my tutorial on the var keyword, then I highly recommend you watch that first before watching this tutorial. So anonymous types, what are they? Let's take a look at an example here. Here I have a class called video game and I'm creating four objects. So it doesn't really matter what's in here, but there's a constructor, some fields, various properties and things like that. So you can see in this example, I'm setting up four objects here by prefixing them with our class as like a data type. Then I'm instantiating a new object with all these parameters. But in order to do this, I have to create a class. Now my class has to have a constructor. Well, it doesn't have to have one, but I do have one and I do want one. Uh, it has all these private fields, some methods and properties and things like that. So it has all of that stuff in this class here, just in order to create four objects right here. But with something called anonymous types, we don't have to define a class. So you see this class here where we define video game. We don't need any of this definition. We don't need this file. We don't need this class per se. So how does that work? Why would it benefit us to not have a class, but we need to instantiate from the class? That doesn't make sense to me. Please explain. <laughs> so anonymous types, they're useful for a couple of reasons. One of the primary reasons is something called link. Now we haven't talked about link, so I won't talk about that now. But another situation, for example, say you're prototyping a piece of software. You want to do a quick piece of software to make sure something works. Or maybe you don't want to create a whole class with lots of methods and things because what you're creating is something quite simple and quick. So there's a couple of reasons really, but one of the benefits is speed. And another benefit is if you're not creating something particularly complicated, maybe it only has two properties and you're not doing much with it, then you can use what's called anonymous types. So how do I create an instance of a class that doesn't exist? Well, that's a very good question. And it starts with the var keyword. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to simulate this video game object here. But rather than using the video game class, I'm going to use an anonymous type. So let's delete all of those and we're just going to use this one as an example. So how can I instantiate a class that doesn't exist using anonymous types? Well, because the class doesn't exist, therefore it's anonymous, we can't really start it with a class name here. So this is where we use the var keyword that we've talked about in a previous tutorial. Now we want to give it a name. I'm just going to call it game anon. And now we need to instantiate a new anonymous object. So how do we do that? We use the new keyword, but now we use curly braces. Now inside these curly braces, we're going to set up our properties for our class. So this line here, pretty much mimics this line here. The only difference is that we don't have to define a class and this class doesn't have to exist. We can call these whatever we would like. It doesn't matter because it's an anonymous type. So if I use my object here, if I put a dot right here, you can see I can access all of the properties that I've defined here. I've spelt them, you know, using crazy characters like gamford, but you can see that that appears in the list and I can actually access this as a property right here. And we have a console here, publisher and rating. So you can see it doesn't matter what I call them. It doesn't matter what values I give. This is purely anonymous because it has no name. It has no class. And because it's anonymous, we store it using the var keyword into an object right here. So you can see this is quite powerful. We don't need a class. It's completely anonymous. And to do that, we just use the new keyword here. But there are a couple of exceptions with this. When we create an anonymous type like this one right here, we can only create read only properties. So there's no constructor, there's no methods, there's no private fields. So imagine if this class here called video game was an anonymous object, then the only thing you can have in here 
are read-only properties. So title, for example, publisher, rating, and they're read-only. So you can only get the values. You can only set them once, and that is when you define the anonymous type right here, the anonymous object. But behind the scenes, this is what would be generated when you create an anonymous type. So read-only properties, no constructors, no fields, no methods. So they're the limitations of using something like this. So it doesn't really stop there when creating anonymous types here. What we can actually do is put an anonymous type within another anonymous type. We can create an array of anonymous types. So lots of different things we can do with them. Let me show you an example right now. So in this example, I have an anonymous type right here inside another anonymous type. So if I use my animal type here and go to dot, I can go to species, which is also an anonymous type, <laughs> and access the noise that the animal might make. So the species could be a dog in which the name of the animal would be a dog and then the noise would be a bark, for example. So you can see I actually have cascading anonymous types. So they are quite powerful in which they work. And you can see just like using the var keyword like before, you have full control over the IntelliSense. You can clearly see everything you specified in here. So that's pretty cool. So one thing you shouldn't really do, but you can kind of do, is pass these anonymous types to methods. Let's take a look at an example now. So when I talked about the var keyword before, you can't have var as a parameter for a method. It doesn't work. So what you would need is the dynamic keyword in which this would work. So if I then call the test method here, I pass in our animal right here, and then we can access it from within here. But because we're using dynamic, if you watched my tutorial on dynamic, we have no access to the IntelliSense here, but we can use it. However, again, we shouldn't really use dynamic when we don't need to. It's, it's really only recommended to use it when you absolutely have to. I don't see much situation where you may be passing an anonymous type to a method. Really, they should just be used within the methods they're defined. But if you do need to do that, then yes, you can make use of the dynamic keyword in order to get around that problem. So you can see now I'm using dynamic, I don't have access to the IntelliSense, but I now can pass this into this method here. So let's check and see if it works. So you can see here I'm outputting bark. So it looks like it works quite well. So this is an example of anonymous types in C Sharp. And because it's an anonymous type and it has no type, therefore that's when you would use the var keyword. And you can see here, you can pass it to methods, but you would have to use the dynamic keyword in order to pass it. But I do not recommend doing that. And lastly, when creating anonymous types, these are properties only, and once defined, they're considered read-only, and you cannot modify them. As you can see right here. So those are anonymous types in C-sharp.